Surprise, motherfucker! Enemy destroyer foundered. The USS Texas is a Tier 5 premium that still exist in real life, thanks to the incredibly based nation who would like to remind the world that they won the war. This is one of the oldest warship that survives two world wars without getting towed to the breaker's yard. <laughs> but now it gets to participate in a third world war. Belligerence includes military historians that loves bitching about the correctness of a new tech tree, to IT experts that doesn't give a damn about balance and most likely have PRPR in their name. Both side hates the game equally. The Texas however, is the best example of how to make everyone happy. Because it was given away for free. Unfortunately it stops there. This is a dreadnought. It has a slight issue of being able to move anywhere. That makes you wonder if you're driving a warship or studying plate tectonics. As it tops out at 20 knots. With a power to weight ratio of mobility scooter, this is a problem, because it's sailing at a constant speed that are easy to predict. You would think it gets good armor to compensate, but nope here's a free real estate that gets penetrated by everything and everyone, especially with HE, which is a big deal given how much armor other tier 5 battleship gets. It is safe to conclude that the only thing more bulletproof than the Texas, is the Giga chair behind the helm, and I have yet to come to the shooty bits. Wanna know what frustration nope. looks like? Frustration is having your gun's nope. dispersion look like sesame seeds on a burger bun that mostly help the enemy feeling good at how lucky they were. Another price to pay for having one of the heaviest broadside of all the tier 5 battleships and here is 34 seconds of reload because the game hates you. You either overpay or shatter on ships that has really convenient armor nope. and there are lots of these in tier 5 yet landing a perfect shot against broadsides, while satisfying to watch, doesn't feel dramatic, mainly because tier 5 is full of infallible people, just like the state of Texas. To put things into perspective, this JSDF recruitment bait, which is on the same tier, is way faster, has more HP, has predictable armor, and only sacrifices a turret. This is speaking from someone who once thought that ship needs help. So, the Texas cannot avoid shots, cannot take damage, and every shell has its own postal code. What should you do with it? Simple, you get rid of that damn thing instead. Now roll the credits. What am I kidding? It wouldn't made into a video if it had nothing worth fixing. Looking at you HE spammers. These are what you need to make Texas work. Damage control party mod 1. Improved repair party readiness. Emergency repair. Adrenaline rush. Furious. This glorious bastard. And a boatload of copium. The goal here is to maximize damage mitigation and to survive as long as possible, while at the same time cutting down the atrocious reload time. You get this by doing two things, shoot at whoever closest to you, and making sure these consumables are not active at the same time. Your shitty concealment and infinite mass will collect all the shells necessary to get improved repair party readiness to its potential, decreasing repair party cooldown. After around 1 million potential damage, you have a repair party ready every 1 minute, while damage control party mod 1 increases your damage control duration for an entire 30 seconds. All of these creates the ultimate tier 5 damage sponge, because the second purpose of this build is to keep the enemy motivated on shooting you, not realizing that they only have 30 to 45 seconds to set you on fire and deal meaningful damage. This gives you many more attempts on getting a good shot, and tick the confederate skill threshold. One citadel for every ship, well except for destroyer, but shoot them anyway, because everyone is gangster, until the Texas starts reloading every 24 seconds. A reminder, 
that it only has 20 knots of speed, meaning, it takes years to get into trouble, and also years to get out of one. Nowadays we call them debts. Pay extra attention to your position, and decide where you need to be before your teammates leave you. If you're taking shot from 3 people, then quickly retreat while doing your best to keep them busy, but the moment they stop shooting at you, start making your way to the other flank right down the middle, to regain enemy's attention. You linger in what Asian people like to call, the no man's land, the graveyard of ships. Most maps have this stretch of water, and it's the perfect place for the Texas, because this is where you can nope. shoot all your guns freely, without getting zoned out to the map edge, a rookie mistake, that you must avoid. The easiest way to remember this is to keep the bow pointing to the center of the map. You maintain this position, until you get confederate, while baiting the enemy to abandon their flank. Don't worry about instantly getting focused, because this is tier 5. Everything else are equally slow, lacking range, accuracy, and definitely short on intelligence. Even carriers must really commit themselves when attacking you. While it won't prevent a strike, your AA is good enough to bleed their planes. As it gets tier 8 level of AA, you can then push when the game decides that you have the better team. But what about against tier 7? In general, you are fucked 6 ways from Sunday! Because that is how this game works if you haven't know it already. But if you're the optimist type, aka people who are incredibly annoying, then you must use the industry proven cunning tactic. That is to load AG and hide behind an island. This has been a historically proven way to turn a bad ship into a good one. But good luck finding such opportunity, as this would only work during late game, and you must have someone else to spot for you. That doesn't mean you cannot deal with higher tier ships, it just works when enemy stupidity completely balance out the difference in power. But at that point you might as well not think too much about doing too well with the ship, because with time, someone that isn't yours truly will find a way to make it look good. You know what else that look good? A continent that can dodge torpedoes. Now say it with me, it's a continental drift. This is how you keep a museum afloat. You use the OP commander, then take emergency repair, grease the gears, improved repair party readiness, and emergency repair expert, then take fire prevention expert, furious, and adrenaline rush. For the upgrades you take the damage control party mod 1, damage control system mod 1, and main battery mod 2. You have enough range to cover most maps, and you are not making craters at Normandy. This is the most authentic way, to try hard on the Texas, it's not a different build, made for the sake of being different. As metaphorically, the Texas is your average boomer, trying to understand the modern world, that are full of convenience and smug millionaires. Itself, and every other dreadnoughts in low tier, are just target practice for soon to be retards that failed their way to tier 10. So if you decide to play this ship, you are giving away hints that you are stuck in the past, unable to move, literally, adapt to the meter, and accept reality. Yet despite all this, you decide to give zero damn. Because that's the beauty of being human. You don't have to listen to anyone. Not even this stupid robot voice that lacks empathy and conscience. You just want to play the Texas because it's the last surviving dreadnought in existence. And that's all that matters. Screw people who said you're not smart enough to pick a certain Italian ship. At least it's not a tier 5 cruiser that exists to randomly explode. This game is biased towards battleships after all. People are just too reluctant to admit it. Now go out there and suffer, and hope you still find good in this game. Because constant state of fun, is a serious violation in the wargaming universe. Meep meep.